In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to approach and solve a circular motion problem. So if you're solving a circular motion problem, chances are it's a uniform circular motion problem. So I'm going to talk about some of the basics of circular motion before we get into the problem solving process. So if something is traveling around in circular motion and it's going clockwise, its velocities are going to be tangent to its circular path. And as something travels around a circle, so say for example, at this specific point right here, its velocity is directed downwards. So anything that is moving downwards has the tendency to remain in state of motion, which would be moving down at exactly the same speed in the same direction. So what happens here is a force is pulling it towards the center of the circle. And as it's being pulled in this direction, it's gonna to start to move somewhere in between. And as it's constantly trying to move in a straight line and also being pulled towards the center of the circle, it makes it turn and it constantly curves around in a circular motion. So this force over here that always pulls or pushes something towards the center is known as the centripetal force. And a centripetal force isn't a new type of force. It's just a different direction that's typically not used when introducing forces. So the different types of forces like force of tension, force of gravity, normal force, force of friction, and so on, um, those are different types of forces. A centripetal force could be any of those forces as long as one of those forces is pushing or pulling something towards the center of the circle, causing it to turn. All right, so when we're referring to something as centripetal, we're just saying something that is directed towards the center of the circle, which could be any type of force given the particular scenario. So let's take a look at a few different scenarios and we'll talk about how to set these up. So if you're solving a circular motion problem, um, you definitely wanna make sure you're very familiar with how to solve a net force problem or a force where you set up a diagram and sum up the forces. And this um, approach is gonna be very similar with a few unique differences. So say for example, we're taking a look at this roller coaster problem over here, and a person is at the bottom of the roller coaster. You would start with the same process that you would with a force problem, which would be drawing a diagram and summing up the forces. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So what I've done so far probably looks pretty similar to something you may have seen before, um, but there are some differences that you want to recognize. So with a circular motion problem, to differentiate between positive and negative forces, you're taking a look to see whether the force points towards the center of the circle or away from the center of the circle. So the normal force isn't positive because it's directed upwards. It's positive because it's pointing towards the center of the circle and acting as a centripetal force, and the force of gravity is counteracting it in the negative direction, um, not pointing in the centripetal direction. So that would mean my Fn is my positive, my Fg is my negative, and the sum of forces equals m times a. Now, oftentimes you wouldn't use m times a because the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r, the velocity squared over the radius, so you would usually set it up as Fn minus Fg equals mv squared over r, okay? And then from there, obviously, depending on what the question is asking, you basically just fill in known variables and then work out the algebra from there. Okay, another thing that you might use in a lot of these problems is using the formula velocity equals 2 pi r 
over t. And that's basically just a distance over time type formula. And two pi r, two times pi times the radius is gonna be the circumference of the circle. So that's just the distance around the circle. And then t uh, stands for period. So capital T doesn't stand for time, it stands for period, which is the time it takes to complete one full cycle or one full circle. So depending on what you're given in the problem, you may have to solve for the velocity first and then plug it in over here and then solve for whatever you need based on what the question is asking. Okay, now if the scenario is a little bit different and the person is over here, and they're upside down in the roller coaster, the setup looks pretty similar, but there are some subtle differences that make a big change in your solution. So if I were to work out this problem, a lot of what I'd be setting up is gonna be pretty similar, except we do have FG pointing downwards as usual. And then the normal force is the perpendicular push from the seat. And since the person is upside down, the normal force would be actually be pointing downwards okay so what i would do in this is instance is we have fg and fn which are both centripetal they are both pointing towards the center of the circle so that means they're both considered positive so i would do the exact same setup i have over here except i'd have fn plus fg okay so remember when working out these circular motion type problems you don't necessarily look if it's up down left or right you're taking a look, is it pointing towards the center of the circle or away from the center of the circle? All right, let's look at a couple other scenarios and I'll point out some significant things to consider in each one of these problems. So if you're taking a look at these, um, this tether ball problem, um, it would be going around in a circle like this. You wanna make sure you're focusing on a view that shows a circle. Okay, what I mean by that is if you're taking a look at the tether ball going around from its profile. If you're watching it, you'd really just watch it go from here and then back and then around. But if you're taking a look at a specific view to see its full circular path, it would actually be the aerial view. So if you're looking down this way, then this would be the center of the pole. Then from the center of the pole, you would see the string going outwards, and then you would actually see the tether ball completing its full circular path. Okay, so you want to make sure you focus on the scenario from a certain view that will represent its full circular path. So if you're taking a look at it like this, um, there's a couple things you want to consider is number one, this force of tension would be pulling up in this direction and then we would have fg as usual straight down okay now the reason why you would want to focus on a particular view to see the entire circle is so that you can correctly identify the centripetal force so the centripetal force that is pointing directly towards the center of the circle is actually not this ft okay because my center of the circle is right here so i want something that's pointing directly at that center of the circle and that would be a force that would be right over here so what you would actually do is for a tetherball type question, what you would do is you would um, use an angle, if an angle is given, and then you would use this force of tension as your hypotenuse of the triangle, and then use the X component of your triangle to represent your centripetal force, and that centripetal force would equal mv squared over r. The final scenario we're gonna be looking at is an orbit problem where it is the Earth traveling around in a circular path around the sun, although it's not a circular path. Um, it just may be used with a circular motion type problem and just kind of assuming that it's elliptical path is basically circular. So we have the force of gravity from the sun pulling the earth towards the center, acting as its centripetal force. And in this case, Based on the universal law of gravitation, we have the constant g, each of the masses over the radius squared, 
equal to mv squared over r. Okay, so those problems can get pretty complicated. Um, if you need some additional help with them, I do have a video that describes um, how to solve an orbit problem and how to solve for little g values. Um, but the gist of most of these problems is that you use um, Newton's law of universal gravitation and set that equal to m times v squared over r, and then you solve for whatever value that you need to. So to sum things up, basically you wanna make sure that you're very careful with the direction of your force. So you need something that is pointing directly towards the center of the circle, acting as your positive. And if there is a negative force involved, it's something pointing directly away from the center of the circle. And then you wanna make sure that if you have anything on an angle of any sort, like a banked curve problem or a tetherball problem, you are picking the, the component of the force that's pointing towards the center of the circle and not something that's angled. And then finally, with the orbit problems, you're typically using um, the force of gravity, universal law of gravitation, and setting that equal to mv squared over r to solve for whatever value you need. So I hope that was helpful in helping you set up and solve a circular motion problem. Thank you for watching and listening.